Hey, it's been a couple months since we've done a video. It's been really crazy around Vanguard Survival. We've got people deploying, had people coming home. We got Joshua back for good now, so we don't have to worry about losing another instructor anytime soon, except for Scott, who's going to be deploying probably sometime in the next few months. With that said, this video is going to cover uh, camouflaging your exposed skin while you're out in the woods. You want to be able to uh, keep yourself hidden, especially if the shit hits the fan. You don't want to be seen by those that are out to do you harm. This will, this video will show you the proper techniques for camouflaging your face and your hands. All right, as you can see, Joshua's face is plainly visible. It stands out against the background, and we're trying to eliminate that look. Now, movement is always going to catch your eye, but if you see how he's laid down right there, we can still see his face. What we're going to try to do is blend that in with the background just like the rest okay, of his uniform. What we're going to try to eliminate here is all this shine right here. What we want to do is we want the raised areas like the forehead, the cheekbones, the nose, and the tip of the chin to be a darker color because they, they catch the sunlight a little bit better than the lower areas. The areas around the eyes, in here, and under the chin, we're going to make a lighter color because there's shadow there. So, what we first thing we'll have him do is take off his sunglasses. What we've got here is a mill issue camo stick. On one side, we have a dark green called loam, and on the other side, we have a lighter green. We're going to start with the darker colors. What we want to do is blend is put coat of green up here on his forehead all right we're gonna hit the high spots first and yes even if they have a beard or a mustache you want to cover that too because that will reflect light so Get under the, no the nose, the nostrils, down the sides a little bit, and anything that's considered that you would look at as a high spot. Think of a like under the eyes as a where you put the the, uh, the anti glare stuff that football players and such use. You want to come up onto the forehead a little bit to where it's going to cover once you wear a hat or something else. Now, as a side note. We've got, he's bald, okay? So you have two options. One, you're gonna cover it with something like um, a hat or a cravat, or you're gonna camouflage the whole head, all right? Now that we've got this portion done, we're gonna use our fingers and just kind of blend it in and give it a good matte finish in here. Like this, we're gonna get this all blended. Now we've got our darker colors, we've got our shine areas, we want to fill in our shadows with our lighter colors. So any place you didn't put the dark colors, you're going to just fill in with the, the light green. Now when it comes to around the eyes, it's easier to use your finger and just kind of have them close their eyes and wipe it in. That way you're not dragging this hard camo stick across their face. Okay, once you've got that done, you can come back in and fill in. Here you just have them purse their lips, like they're putting on lipstick. Now, you can do this yourself with the mirror, but it's a lot easier to do if you have a partner. Do it, you apply it to them, they apply it to you. Now, once you get 
the green in, the light green in, have them raise their chin, and we're going to do alternating stripes of light green and dark green underneath the chin, okay, because we want this whole thing to blend, all right? Now, yes, you're going to say there's shadow under here, but depending on how he moves his head, we're going to have the contrast and what we're trying to do is break up his outline all right so once we get that done we want to do the high points of the years and then down inside the ear a little bit we want the ears covered too so that we're not gonna have something massively flesh colored standing out. Now once we get that done, we're gonna go back over with our fingers, fill in any spots, and blend the two colors. We don't want to blur everything, you know, we don't want to blur one color into the other. We just want a nice blend of the two colors where they come together. Okay, now that we've got both of our colors on there, on his face, we're gonna to wanna to take the cravat. All you're gonna do is just turn it like this and then have them put it on their head to where it covers whatever you didn't put camouflage on, all right? Just twist it up and get it where it's gonna cover their head once they're all camo. Now, you're gonna to wanna to carry this around to the back. You can see we've still got some fleshy areas here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to touch up areas that we missed, like right here, and coming around the back, because we don't want any skin to show through, or at least not much. Now we've got him covered you can see his hands are still out there this is where you'd want to wear gloves okay but we didn't since he didn't bring any gloves with him what we're gonna do is you want to do the backs of the hands you don't want to do the fronts because you don't want anything to interfere with you being able to carry your weapon you're just gonna put alternating stripes down the backs of the hands up to the, the uh, cuff on the sleeve okay and we want to blend those with the light green as well so we have all kinds of different color in there and then just have them rub the backs of his hands to blend it and once they've got it blended into the backs you'll see that we've got a pretty good mix of color in here so it's not not all um, flesh colored all right now we're gonna send Joshua back up into the woods where we started at so you can see the difference between his face just being plain and what it looks like once he's got the camo on. All right, as you see, we've got him camouflaged up. His face doesn't stand out nearly as much at that distance as it did before. Yes, he's easy to see because we want him to be, but once he takes a prone, you'll see that it's a lot more difficult to make out exactly where he's at. Now, he took a prone position in the exact same place he did before, 
and you can see that he's pretty much disappeared into the the wood line which makes it much more easy for him to see you and you not to see him all right as you can see he's a lot more difficult to see than he was before he's probably 20 feet from the camera right now maybe 30 and he blends in rather nicely with his face painted and the uniform. It blends him into this kind of environment really well. All right, as you can see, camouflaging your face and your hands, especially when you're trying not to be seen, works out. This is just one way of doing it. It's not the only way. You can do vertical slices, you can do horizontal slices, depending on the terrain you're in. Same thing goes with color. Up here, the loam and the light green work well because this is a forested woodland environment. Now, if you were going to be out on, say, the pastures or the plains, you'd want to go with a, 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 a tan and a light green, all right? You want to avoid the blacks and the, the browns, pretty much, that come in, in some of the, the camel compacts, simply because, mainly, the colors don't match. Um, they're not realistic. Now, this right here has been used by the U.S. military for at least the last 50 years, if not longer. Um, they keep using the same system because it works. Now, um, in our next video, we're going to cover um, field expedient ways of camouflaging yourself using what you find around you and not just the, the store-bought stuff. So until next time, thanks for watching, and as always, train to survive.